Okay, so in this uh, particular video, we're going to take a look at the exact steps to solve this problem. So what is this equal to? Well, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is what is this? Okay, so what is going on here? Now, these little bars, okay, uh, some of you might think to yourself, well, is, does this mean absolute value? Like if I take the absolute value of negative 3, that's positive 3 because we have these little two bars right there. You know, that, of course, is logical, makes sense. However, this has nothing to do with absolute value. This is something different. So if you're at the algebra two level, maybe college algebra level, you know, anything be up beyond an algebra one level, you really start uh, getting into this particular topic and you're gonna see this. And uh, if you're looking at this problem, you're like, hmm, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. Well, stick around for a minute or two. I'm actually gonna show you how to solve this. It's actually pretty easy, but, uh, uh, to get the solution, but what's even more important is for you to understand what this is and why it is important. Now, if you think you know how to solve this, go ahead and do it. It will actually take you about 15 seconds. Put your answer into the comment section and tell me what this is, okay? If you know what this is, right, it starts with a D, okay? That's excellent if you can tell me what it is, but I also want you to tell me what, uh, why it's important or what it is. Just don't tell me uh, the term, the description, give me a definition beyond just a description of it. So hopefully that's clear enough. But uh, if you know what this is and you, know, you can explain it, then that's pretty impressive. Put that into the comment section and we'll uh, compare notes here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I am the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are having a tough time in math for whatever reason, okay, maybe you you struggle for math uh, for many years. Maybe you hate math, you don't like math. That's okay, but here's the thing. Uh, in order to be successful in anything, you're gonna have to change your mindset. And I'm telling you right now, you could be successful in math, and it doesn't have to be so painful um, as well. So if you're not getting enough instruction in class, maybe you're not getting enough time with your teacher, or maybe you're not connecting with your teacher's teaching style, whatever the case might be, I've been teaching math for decades, and I really explain things in super easy, clear and understandable, uh, clear and understandable, bite-sized pieces. And that's what you need. You need the right instruction. Of course, you need to be uh, willing to put in the work as well. But if you have the right instruction and you work hard, you're going to be successful. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, definitely check out my math help program if you're having a tough time. Now, if you're preparing for any kind of test that has a math section. And you might be not uh, not taking this test right now. You might be taking a test like this in the future. I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCPLACE, or CLEP exam. Maybe a teacher certification exam. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you definitely got to check out my homeschool math courses. They were just voted number one from a big uh, major national homeschool publication. Very proud of that in the uh, category of middle and high school mathematics. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But if you're having a tough time in math, the first thing you need to do is start improving your notes. That will help you tremendously. Okay, so let's get into this. So first of all, before we even talk about um, how to solve this, what is this? Okay, like, all right, well, we already talked about, is this absolute value? No, this is an absolute value. And in mathematics, sometimes we do use the same uh, notation. Uh, you just, you know, but it means something different. Okay, it's just like the English language you can have the same word that, you know, you can use it in various ways. Uh, same thing in math. So this is a what? Well, we're talking about a determinant. Okay, but the broader topic here is what? Well, we're really talking about matrices, okay? A matrix, matrices. So uh, when you are at the Algebra two college algebra level, you're typically gonna, typically going to have a chapter uh, called something like matrices and determinants. Very, very important that you understand what a matrix is, okay? So a matrix could be something like 4, 1, 3, 8, 7, 9, okay? And a matrix, and this is an example of a matrix, and just a real quick review, it is uh, what we would call an array. It's a way to organize information in rows and columns. And uh, let me ask you, uh, in computer pr uh, programs, and almost 99.9% .9 of you have this on your, have this software on your computer, and that is what? It's uh, Excel, right? 
So if you're familiar with the um, software Excel a spreadsheet, what do you do? Well, you got a bunch of rows and a bunch of columns. Same thing uh, when we're looking at matrices. That's why uh, a matrix is so, so very, very powerful and useful. It's a way to organize um, information by rows and columns. So that's a matrix. But what do we do with uh, a matrix okay, and various matrices? Well, there's a lot you need to learn. right? You need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, find the uh, inverse of a matrix. Uh, that is a whole nother uh, deal. Okay, and uh, one of the other major things you need to understand is how to find the determinant of a matrix. There's a lot of other stuff I'm kind of missing out, but uh, knowing how to work with matrices is very, very important. So this here, okay, happens to be uh, the determinant of a two by two matrix, two by two matrix, two rows and two columns. So you can only find the determinant of a what we call a square a square matrix, okay? So in other words, uh, equal number of rows and columns, like a two by two and a three by three, et cetera. So when you first start learning about determinants, you start learning how to find the determinant of a two by two matrix. To find the uh, determinant of a three by three matrix, it's much more involved. So a two by two, very easy. Three by three, much more involved. And there's a couple different methods to do that. If you're interested in knowing um, how to solve or how to work with um, and find the determinants of three by three matrices, I believe I have a couple videos on that on my YouTube channel, but you really want to thoroughly uh, understand and master all this. You might want to look at one of my courses like my Algebra 2 course, my College Algebra course, or even my Pre-Calculus course. But uh, okay, so we're talking about uh, finding the determinant and we can only find the, de the determinant of square matrices, okay, i.e. matrices that have the same number of rows and columns. So if we look at this matrix over here, can we find the determinant of this matrix? Now this is a matrix. If I wanted to try to find the determinant, I would use this notation, right? Unfortunately, this makes no sense because this is not a square matrix, okay? Uh, this has two rows, okay, and three columns. So uh, i.e., again, it's not the, the rows do not equal the number of columns, so we can't find the determinant of a matrix like this. Uh, of course, we can do other things with it, like multiply, etc. But uh, again, a determinant is what now? Okay, well, I, I already kind of just told you when, when we can take uh, the determinant or when we can find the determinant, but what is the determinant? I haven't answered that question. Well, it's nothing more than a number. You're like, well, what does that number mean? Well, it's nothing more than a number. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything in and of itself. So it's just a number that's associated with every square matrix. Okay, so the determinant is a number, a value that's associated with every square matrix. However, this number, when we find the determinant, it has a lot of various excellent applications. Okay, it can help us solve other type of problems. So when we're dealing with matrices and uh and you can find the determinant, well, you can use that determinant value to solve uh, other problems. So very, very cool stuff. So, um, but again, the value of the determinant in and of itself is just a number, it doesn't have any kind of intrinsic meaning. Okay, so if you knew all of that, then that's excellent. Okay, so again, uh, I'm gonna get into how to uh, actually calculate the determinant, but it makes no use to calculate the determinant if you don't even know what it is, right? So how do we calculate the determinant? Well, for a two by two determinant, it is super easy. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and you have to go in this step, you're gonna multiply uh, these diagonals. Okay, so A times four, you're gonna multiply this way first. Okay, you're gonna put that answer there, and then you're going to subtract this direction. Three times two, you're gonna have your answer right there, but you kind of see it kind of wrote it out this way. So it's gonna be uh, the yellow first, eight times four, it's always this direction, okay? It's never the other way, It's you always start with this product first. So eight times four, you're gonna put that answer there, and then you're gonna subtract three times two, you're gonna put that answer there, then the actual value is going to be the determinant. So let's go ahead and see this in action. Again, I told you this was easy to calculate, but the calculating uh, the calculating part is not the difficult part. Uh, the difficult part is, hey, what is a determinant? What does it mean, et cetera? So here we go. So eight times four, of course, is 32 minus three times two is six. Uh, so 32 minus six is 26. So the determinant 
of this two by two matrix is 26. Now, again, this number doesn't have any value um, in and of itself. It's just a number that's associated with this square matrix, but we can do things with this in other applications, okay? Very powerful applications as well. So uh, one last thing on uh, the determinant of a two by two uh, matrix. If you have a negative value, let's kind of change this uh, problem up right here. So let's say I had a negative two as entry. So I have uh, eight times four, 32. Now we have three times a negative two. Let's say I had that situation. You would have to be very careful with that. That's gonna be negative six. So it's 32 minus a minus six. Okay, don't make this error. So this is going to, of course, be 32 plus six, which of course, if my math is okay today, that is 38. So that's another uh, uh, place where students kind of mess up on these little you know, negative signs. So be very, very careful. Uh, matrices have a tendency when you're doing determinants or multiplying matrices, just this whole chapter, you're gonna see, or as a math teacher for me, I've been doing, you know, teaching math for decades, you see all the little bad habits come out uh, with students. If you, if a student hasn't been neat and organized, uh, they're going to make a ton of mistakes because they just kind of uh, don't clearly manage, you know, all these little negative signs and positive signs. The only way you can manage this stuff by is by showing, you know, uh, all your work step by step, super clear, nice and neat, double checking as you go. That's how you limit errors okay anyone's going to make a mistake if you're doing a lot of math you're going to make a mistake i still make mistakes to this day i try to catch 99.9 percent .9 of my mistakes but I, uh, some of them kind of get through so that's normal okay uh but what you want to do is limit the amount of your mistakes and the only way you can limit your mistakes is one you got to be super neat two you got to show your steps each step uh, and then you also have to kind of double check as you go all right so double check your work be neat, show your steps, double check, and then lastly, you got to practice, all right, uh, and build good um, habits in terms of solving uh, math problems, all right? So these steps are universal when we're talking about mathematics. So if you master this stuff, you're going to uh, really kind of reduce your uh, errors down by 99%, and that's very, very good, right? There's not too many perfect people out there. I haven't met any. I'm certainly uh, far from being perfect. So, but again, if you practice correctly and you're doing the right things, you will definitely dramatically reduce the amount of errors you will make. All right, so hopefully this little video helped you out and you learned a little bit more about determinants than you knew going into this video. If that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. And uh, hopefully you will also uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for uh, 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math, uh, all the way to advanced math uh, calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.